said I wasn't going to do it, so I did it. <laughs> That's how this works out. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not doing it. Oh, fuck it. <laughs> All right, so, um, yeah, this is, uh, I'm taking a second look at John Wick Chapter 2. As made available on Peacock. <laughs> Without audio description. <laughs> because that makes sense. Um, yeah, so thanks, Peacock, for, uh, for... <laughs> for uh just, just just slapping me in the face there's a there's actually like when you go to play john wick 2 um i did it on my iphone it was really funny because i clicked on it and this like little hand like popped up out of my iphone and it just slapped me and it was like no i hate you and i was like what peacock what and then i found out it was because it didn't have audio description and i was like oh oh yeah yeah, Peacock doesn't have audio description. They hate me. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's accessibility, guys. You guys gotta get that accessibility up in there. You know, it's, uh, this is, the movie is, the movie's fucking stupid without audio description. <laughs> it's ridiculous. But the first, first part of the movie is just like, I want, it really, every once in a while, I really wish I could do more. Uh, I don't know about the, the legalities, but if, if I found out that it was legal for me to sit here and, and do, I would do an entire, like, audio track commentary of what it's like for, like, like, like all of these movies, just sitting here and watching them, and telling you guys about all of them while you listen to this, while you listen to, like, motorcycles rev and cars, you know. That's like the whole fucking opening to John Wick Chapter 2. Just, I was like, am I in the Fast and Furious? Is this the Cars franchise? Yeah, it's just, it's a lot of cars being moved around. The sad thing is I've seen this movie before. I've only seen it once. So, like, there were moments that I remembered... But not all of them. Like, uh, I remember Lawrence Fishburne's scene, for example, that's in this. Um, I remembered Common being in this and having a pretty uh, decent-sized part. Um, I remember the the scene with Jana. I'll, I'll just say that to keep it kind of spoiler-free. Keeping these all kind of light, kind of fluffy, spoiler-free little references. Um, so there were some scenes that I remembered... Uh, but, you know, I mean, there's so much fighting that you, like, if you're trying to get it in there, uh, you know, and get that, who's shooting at who, who got shot, who, how many people are shooting, how many people are fighting, uh, who's he fighting, who's fighting him, who punched who, uh, you know, anything like that, it's, it, no, 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 and that's like most of the movie. Um, I mean, you can, yeah, there's enough dialogue in this where you can follow the core plot. John Wick Chapter 2 might have the most dialogue, because <laughs> it has to explain sort of like a complicated backstory while continuing to expand the lore of the John Wick universe. Um, it's, it's kind of like my least favorite John Wick film because it kind of feels like it's, it, it didn't need to happen, but they're trying to really make it make it happen uh the film starts off very self-referential by reminding us of why we are where we are by like basically telling you the plot of the first film in case for some reason you decided to start with john wick chapter two instead of john wick chapter how many people just like read a book and they just go you know what i'm gonna open to page 47 and just go from there like okay um, I guess that's one way to do it. <laughs> you know, you just skip the first book, chapter of the book. I don't know. You know, whatever. Do you, you do you. Um, apparently enough people, that the John Wick people felt like that they had to explain the first film up at the top and, uh, <laughs> then tie it in and, and, uh, then, then they had to explain why we're still here, why we're moving forward, because he kind of wrapped up the plot in the first movie. So we check out on John now, and this other guy's like, ah, yeah, ha. 
you're not retired anymore. I hear you've killed somebody, which means I'm activating this cool thing you didn't know that existed. It's called a marker. It means you gotta do what I t what I say. And he's like, and, and of course John Wick is Keanu. It's like, no, no, find someone else. And uh, there's a little bit of conflict, a little bit of strife between this guy and uh, John Wick. And uh, leads to John having to honor the uh, the marker so it sets him free. Uh, dude thinks he can get out, but he can't really get out. And, of course, the tables turn and uh, John Wick becomes a wanted man. And then John Wick, at least by the end of the film, is just kind of like, you know what? Screw it. Come for me, bitches. Uh, which sets up, uh, chapter three, Parabellum, where, uh, all bets are off type of thing, where he's just like, you know what? I don't care. My wife's dead. My dog's dead. I've inherited the dog that I just called dog now. <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> you know, does it have a name? No. No, I didn't even bother. You know? Um... But yeah, I mean, it's, the thing is, I saw this movie before and it was, it's, it's decent. It's not the first film. The first film felt so unique because it was like, it's just this guy, you don't really know much about him, but you learn that he is not to be trifled with over the course of the film. And chapter two, you already know that. So it doesn't reveal really anything new about John Wick. It just kind of takes him into like a new scenario. It's sort of like... The first time you meet James Bond, you're like, oh my god, this guy's a badass. And then after that, you're just like, oh, it's just James Bond again. You know, the same thing with, like, Jason Bourne. You're like, oh, look at, oh my god. Second film, you're like, oh, he's on another adventure. <laughs> For more reasons. Eh, that's all this is. It's just it's an extension of the first film. So, um, I don't... I mean, they grow the lore of the world that he's in and reshape it and shape it a little bit more. But I don't think they necessarily uh, took full advantage of what the first film set up and created something that felt like it had to happen. You know, like this, like this story would organically came out of the first film. Because he basically ties up the first film, the last little remnant of the first film was tied up in like the first 10 minutes. So, and then it opens itself up to this other thing and it, it is what it is, you know. And then, and then you're like, oh, well, we're just doing this now. So, um, it's fun. It's an action film. Um, but for blind people... Uh, it's a fucking nightmare to not have audio description. There isn't that much dialogue. There's some dialogue. I feel like there might be a little bit more dialogue in this film than there was the last one. It's really hard to tell. It's about even. Um, there's a little bit more exposition, I think. Definitely, because they have to explain the first film. Assume, I guess they assume nobody saw it. <sighs> It was annoying up at the top of the film. I hate when people do that. When they're like, let's just explain the plot of the first film. It's like, or you can just assume that because it's a sequel, most people saw it. Um, it's not even a sequel. It's not even like a legacy sequel. It's like 30 years later where you feel like... I mean, Top Gun Maverick did less explaining than this film does. <laughs> that had a reason to explain. Um... Yeah, this is, uh, it's, it's fine. It's good. Uh, it's just not the first film. So, uh, the action set pieces, I remember them being pretty cool. I remember a lot of the stuff that happens between Keanu and, and Common, uh, was pretty, pretty fun and pretty elaborate, I would say. Um, good stuff, good times. Um... But, at the end of the day, uh, this is still just a movie about a man 
whose dog died. <laughs> and uh, the repercussions that came out of that. So, while I am totally dismayed with Peacock for lacking an audio description on these titles, uh, they have no problem making sure to let you know that they are the current home of John Wick, uh, the John Wick collection, but they won't provide you with accessibility and audio description for those titles, uh, which is just lazy, because you know they're out there. I mean, you know they're on like a DVD somewhere. If if I if I wanted to harass my library for the DVD copy of this, I think I actually own this. Um, <laughs> I might. I don't know. I know I own the first one. I can't remember if I ever bought the second one. Um, you, you know, if you harass your people, you would you find. Uh, I'm sure audio description on a Blu-ray or something, but. <sighs> they, they just won't put it. They just don't do it. They just don't care. So, um, uh, my official grade as a blind film critic is that John Wick Chapter 2 is unwatchable uh, for many reasons because there are long sequences without dialogue that just sound, are just sound effects, basically. And you, you will not know who died when, who got shot, who is being punched, um, how many people are even active in the scene? How many people is he fighting off? Is he fighting off 20, 5, 1? I have no idea. Um, it's very confusing. So my grade's unwatchable. However, I did see this film before when I could see, um, which is the last, this is the last of the John Wick films that I can actually say that about. So uh, having been through it again for the second time, I can say that my grade would be a B plus for John Wick Chapter Two. So, um, yeah, I enjoyed it. The reason you go to these films for the action, which is what makes it really frustrating that there's no audio description for the action. This is not something that's written by like Aaron Sorkin that has like inspiring dialogue that lifts you up. It's not based on a true story where you feel like you're learning a chunk of history. It's people kicking ass. And if that doesn't translate, then what the fuck is the point? Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, please click subscribe. Because all of this stuff that I'm saying doesn't really register with the amount of subscribers that I have to the people who need to hear it. So, um, yeah. Peacock does not listen to people who are at my subscriber level. It'd be nice to have more subscribers. Um, and uh, you can go to my website, MacTheMovieGuy.com. You can go to the audio description project, adp.acb.org. It'll let you know what does have audio description where you can watch it. For example, like the John Wick films, uh, what DVD slash Blu-ray opportunities they have for you if you really want to get up in it. Probably also VOD, I'm going to guess, if you purchase it off of iTunes or Amazon or something. But we shouldn't have to. I mean, if you pay for a streaming service uh, and the audio description exists for a film, these streaming services need to start actually, you know, owning up to the fact that the audio description has already been created and at least grab audio description that already exists even if they're not going to create new audio description for, like, old catalog titles or anything like that, even if they're so lazy that they don't want to expand it, bare minimum, they should be taking the audio description along with the title. So, I have no problem telling Peacock to go fuck themselves. Um, and then you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at MacTheMovieGuy. So, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and I will uh, see you guys on the other side.